Now there is this one shortcut in modulus functions which is being extensively used in a wide variety of problems and typically such questions involve a function fx which is a combination of linear polynomial and linear modulus functions. So this fx it will be of the form some mod of ax plus b plus minus mod of cx plus d plus minus mod of ex plus f so on and so forth and in the end it will also have some linear polynomial say px plus q. Now such functions they are being used in equations, inequalities, continuity differentiability, integral calculus, graphs. So for such questions there is this shortcut that we can draw the graph of this function in a very simple way. Now the shortcut for such functions is to draw the graph of this function. Now let us take up an example. This function fx and this function fx is mod of x plus 2 plus mod of x minus 2 minus mod of x plus 1 minus x and we have to find something about this function which we'll decide later. At this point of time we are only concerned with how to draw the graph of this function in a simple fashion. Now in order to draw the graph of such functions first step is find all the critical points. So for this function find all the critical points and the critical points are where the mod function changes sign so we'll put them all equals to zero. We'll get all the critical points. So here critical points are minus b by a minus d by c etc. So for this function our critical points are minus 2 plus 2 and 0. So if we put x plus 2 as 0 we will get minus 2, x minus 2 as 0 we will get plus 2 and if we put x as 0 we will get this as 0. There is no critical point for this simple linear function. So we will have critical points only for the modulus functions. Second point is we will find the value of this function at critical points. So we will find the value of this function at minus b upon a. We will find the value of this function at minus d upon c. So in this case we will find the value of this function at minus 2. So f minus 2. This is 0. This is plus 4. Minus 2. Plus 1. Minus minus plus 2. So this value is 5. So f of minus 2 is 5. Now the next critical point is 0. We will find the value of f0. If we put x is 0, this will be 2 plus 2 minus 0 plus 1 minus 0 and that will be 5. And the final critical point is f2. And if we put x is 2, this is 4 plus 0 minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 so it will be simply plus 1. So now we have values at all the critical points. So first step is find the critical points and second step is find the value of this function at these critical points. Now our third step is we will take a value of x which is less than our smallest critical point. Say it is x1 and we will choose a x which is greater than our largest critical point and we will find value of this function at those points fx1 and fx2. Now in this case the smallest one is minus 2. So what we will do is we will take suppose minus 3. So we will find f minus 3. Now if you put x as minus 3 it will be minus 3 plus 2 plus 1. This is plus 5 minus 3 plus 1 and then plus 3 and I'll cancel. So this is 7 and our largest critical point is 2. So we'll take a value greater than 2. Let us take this value as 3. So if we take f3 now this is 5 plus 1 minus 3 plus 1 minus 3. Now this is 1. So now we have values at all the critical points 
and we also have value at two points one which is less than the smallest critical point and the one which is greater than the largest critical point now what we'll do is we'll draw our axis and we'll mark these points so let this be our axis now this is zero this is plus two and this is minus two so these are our critical points and we have taken two more points so one of them is minus three and the other one is plus three now this is one two three four five six seven now we will mark these points now at minus two this value is five at zero again this value is five at 2, this value is 1. At 3, this value is 1. At minus 3, this value is 7. Now we have to draw this graph. Now what we simply know is any modulus function is plus or minus ax plus b. So if we take plus sign or minus sign and if we solve them all together, all of them there will be nothing but line segments. So our entire graph will only have line segments. And since it is a continuous function, we'll have continuous line segments. Now, all we need to do is we need to join these points. First, we'll join these points. Then the next set is this. Then we have these two points. And then this is our last set. So this is the graph of our function fx. Function fx is given as mod of x minus 1 minus mod x and then plus mod x plus 1 for x belongs to r. Now the general way of solving this question will be I'll take up different intervals when x is less than minus 1 when x lies between minus 1 and 0 between 0 and 1 and when x is greater than 1 and for each of this interval I'll write the definition of each modulus function separately and then I'll add them and subtract them accordingly. Now there is a direct method with which we can draw this graph. Now what I essentially know is in each of the interval when I'll remove this mod sign it will either have a plus sign or a minus sign. So in each of the interval it will represent a portion of a straight line. So first I'll draw the axis. Now for mod of x minus 1 its definition changes at x equal to 1. The definition of mod x changes at x equal to 0. And the definition of x plus 1 changes at x equals to minus 1. So I'll mark these three points on x-axis. So I'll mark minus 1, I'll mark 0, and I'll mark plus 1. Now I'll find the value at each of the three points. I'll find the value at minus 1. So if I put x as minus 1, I'll get f minus 1 equals to 1. If I put x as 0, I'll get this value as 2 and if I'll put x as 1 again I'll get this value as 1 so I'll mark all the three points so at minus 1 this value is 1 at 0 this value is 2 and at plus 1 this value is again 1 now there is no definition change between minus 1 and 0 and 0 and 1 so that means between minus 1 and 0 I'll join these two points and I'll draw the straight line and again between 0 and 1 there is no change of definition so again I'll join these two points and I'll draw this line. Now also when x is less than minus 1 or when x is greater than 1 there is no change in definition. So again in these intervals I'll take up a random point and then I'll mark its value maybe at minus 2. So if I put x is minus 2 the value I'll get is 3 minus 2, 1, 1 plus 1, 2. And also at 2, the value again will be 2. So at minus 2, this value is 2. And at plus 2 also, this value is 2. So again, I'll join these two points. So that's the graph of this given function. So in each of the case, it is going to represent a portion of a straight line. So in order to draw a straight line, all I need to do is, I need to just mark two points. So that's what I have done in this case. So in case of any linear modulus function with a plus or minus sign, 
This is the simplest way of solving it. Suppose if I have to find the range of this function, so the minimum value of this function is 1. So range of this function will be y belongs to from 1 to infinite. So let us take up another example. Now here fx is given by mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x plus 2 and minus 2 mod x when x belongs to r. Now for this one, definition of mod x minus 2 changes at 2. Definition of x plus 2 changes at minus 2. And definition of mod x changes at 0. So I'll draw the x's and I'll mark these points. Minus 2, 0 and plus 2. Now I'll also find the value at minus 2. So value at minus 2 will be 0. Value at 0 will be 4. And value at plus 2, again it will be 0. So I'll mark all the three points. Now since there is no definition change between minus 2 and 0, I'll join these two points. For 0 and 2 also, I'll join these two points. Now, when x is less than minus 2, I'll take any random point in this interval. Maybe I'll take f minus 3. So if I'll put x as minus 3, I'll get 0 again. And if I'll put x as 3, then again I'll get this value as 0. So again, I'll draw the straight line. So the graph which I have drawn in black is the graph of this given function. Let me take another example. So suppose the function fx is x plus 1 plus mod x minus 1 minus mod x. Now for mod x minus 1, definition changes at 1. And for mod x, definition changes at 0. Now I'll draw the x's and mark these two points. I'll find the value at 0. When x is 0, y is 2. So I'll mark the point. When x is 1, y is 1. So now I'll join these two points. I'll take up a point when x is less than 0. So when x is minus 1, y is plus 1. Again, I'll join these two points. And for this interval, when x is greater than plus 1, again, I'll take up a point. Suppose I'll take x equals to 2. I'll again get this value as 2. So when x is 2, y is 2. So again, I'll join these two points. So that's the graph of the given function. For this question, I need to find values of a for which the equation mod x minus 1 plus mod x minus 2 plus x minus a has two solutions. So I can write this equation as mod of x minus 1 plus mod of x minus 2 plus x is equal to a. Now one way of doing it can be I can take three separate intervals. x is less than 1. When x lies between 1 and 2. And when x is greater than 2, another way is using graphs. So I'll solve this equation using graphs. So I'll draw the graph of y equals mod of x minus 1 plus mod of x minus 2 plus x. And I'll draw the graph of y equals a. So we have already drawn such graphs in previous lectures. So here definition changes at 1 and here definition changes at 2. So I'll draw the x's. I'll find the values. When x is 1, value of y is 2. And when x is 2, value of y is 3. So I'll mark these points. So when x is 1, y is 2, I'll join this portion of a straight line. Now, I'll take another point when x is less than 1. So maybe I'll take 0. So when x is 0, y is 3. So I'll draw this portion of a straight line. I'll take another point which is x equals to 3. y is 6. So I'll draw it. It is given that this equation has two solutions. So that means I need to draw the graph of y equals to a so that these two graphs, they intersect at two points. So if a is less than two, then this line will lie below this graph. So then there'll be no point of intersection. If a is two, in that case, there will be only one point of intersection. Now when a is greater than two, then these two graphs, they'll intersect at two distinct points. So then it will have two solutions. So this equation will have two solutions when a is greater than 2.